Yeah, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me this morning for our first Q&A um, Zoom meeting. And uh, that's for the summer, fall OSU PDC Pro class. So that's great that everybody's uh, getting an opportunity to join me, I guess, because uh, we're probably looking at an extended long weekend for a lot of, uh, a lot of folks in the US. Makes today a little bit easier to join. And uh, for, you know, in, in uh, well, with meetings that are coming up, if for some reason you're not able to make them, no problem, we uh, record all of these and we will be uh, posting them on the Q&A Zoom uh, discussion board as well as my uh, YouTube channel. So I'll uh, put that link in the chat here as well. All right. Okay. Just pop that in there. And yeah, feel free to use the chat through the meeting if you like. Uh, also, if you have any questions as we go along, please don't hesitate to unmute yourself and, um, and just chime right in with whatever questions you have. So Cool. Well, let's get going. Uh, what I'm going to do is share my screen here and we're going to, well, maybe what I'll do just first of all is a quick intro. Um, and then we'll look at the course platform here. So uh, my name is Jamie Wallace and um, my wife and myself operate uh, a regenerative land design uh, company. Um, in fact, I'll bring it up on the screen here. And we'll just share that for a moment. Yeah, so like I say, my wife and myself uh, operate um, Jan Designs. It's a regenerative land design uh, company on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. So we're uh, on the West Coast here and uh, we're in a quite a mild climate for Canada. So USDA zone 8B. Um, we've been uh, operating our business uh, on the island here for well, about 27 years. Uh, before that, I worked for quite a few years in uh, the Vancouver Park System. I, that's where I took my training um, initially. And... Um, yeah, we have a great time with some of the work that we do. Um, we, up until this year, we have been designing and installing all of our work. And uh, this past summer, we had uh, my father passed away who, who lived with us. Um, and my, my wife's father passed away and a brother-in-law passed away all within about three weeks. So we took a little bit of downtime um, just to kind of readjust. And um, so this year we're still actively designing and involved with OSU, of course. Um, but we're not, uh, we haven't done any installations this year. And I, I think we're going to back away from that. Um, just after all these, uh, you know, a lot of years on a shovel. And um, there are other people in our area that can help us out with those. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. I've tried that before and it didn't work out so well, but um, we'll see what happens with that. Anyhow, that is a little bit about myself and um, yeah, feel free to check out some of our work here if you want. Uh, let me just go to another screen here. There we go. Right. So this is, uh, we'll just do, what we'll do is a little bit of a uh, overview of the platform because um, I found when I, st I started uh, instructing for OSU, and I guess it was uh, seven or eight years ago, uh, it took me a little while just to get used to the platform. And, 
you know, I am computer literate, but it wasn't, uh, it didn't really feel intuitive. So hopefully I can help you along with a little bit of that today. Um, when you log on to the course, you're obviously going to see a very similar screen uh, to what we're viewing here. And there are a number of different menus on uh, the left, uh, the far left and the inner left. So on the far left, you'll have an account and uh, a dashboard uh, if you are taking more courses or I'm not actually sure exactly how your screen is going to look over here. But, uh, you know, for myself, it's all the courses I have taught and the ones that uh, are coming up here. So we have two courses that go on uh, at the same time. So there's another course running and they are um, in the, just past the halfway mark in their journey here. So every other week we will have a Q&A session and then every other week uh, you'll have assignments due. So they, they sort of overlap both of these courses. Um, so yeah, that uh, on the left here as well, you have a calendar and you also have an inbox. So this is a great way uh, for you to get a hold of myself uh, or any other student that you wish to communicate with. I'm pretty sure that you can do that. Um, if you do run into trouble, that's one way of getting a hold of me. The other way would be to just uh, directly email me and I can just put my email in, even though I have it, uh, I've sent it out in a note before. Uh, that is my email address. You can feel free to uh, drop me a note anytime you wish, if you get into any uh, challenges at all. Um, I do offer for people that get stuck and most, you know, most people uh, for the first few lessons or no challenge at all. It's, you know, it's pretty straightforward, but when we get into the class a little bit, especially when we get near lesson five, uh, it can get a little trickier. And uh, if you do feel you get stuck and you need some help, um, you can just get a hold of me you can actually book a little Zoom, uh, a short Zoom meeting. And I'm going to put that link in here too. All right. So there is a link uh, in the chat if for some reason you need some help getting through a tough part of the course. You just can't figure out uh, whatever challenge you're having. I'm happy to meet up with you. If you click that link, it goes to my uh, scheduling um, platform and um, it's tied into my calendar. So you can book a time that uh, day and time that works for you. And if for some reason you can't find anything that works, just uh, drop me a note and we'll figure something out there. Um, so yeah, in all, in all likelihood, you won't need that, but it, it is a backup for you, okay? Um, yes, yeah, so you have resources and some other icons here. Uh, the main part of the platform here is under the home setting, and uh, you're gonna have a few things that you would want to uh, take a look at modules is one of them. This is a really interesting um, uh, resource to go through. And what I would recommend for any of those uh, folks out there that are hoping to design for others, right? They're hoping to take this knowledge and sort of maybe build a little business out of, or even just kind of explore that possibility. Uh, what I would suggest under resources, go to what's called client interface. So it may not be the best uh, title, <laughs> but uh, this is a fascinating page. Under here, there is um, several people. They got Andrew, myself, uh, Kelda, and Neil. And uh, 
what, uh, what's fascinating about this page is each one of these uh, folks will walk you through their design process from sort of start to finish. So it's a really interesting, um, very interesting videos to view. Because we all <clears throat> have different processes. And I think you'll probably find if uh, you went on to design uh, for others, that's probably what would happen with yourself. You would, uh, you know, you get influenced by what other people do, and then you kind of tweak it to, to work for you and your clients. So that is certainly worth checking out. And if we just back up, uh, you'll also see there's other resources here, okay? Uh, including for some folks, uh, you know, life, <laughs> life happens and partway through the course, you know, we've had students that have had either medical issues or have had trouble uh, at home and, and they just can't focus uh, their time. So there is a re-enrollment policy here. So you can take a look at that. If you needed to uh, continue on your journey onto another class, you know, you, you have that opportunity at a discounted rate. If there is a uh, medical hardship or some hardship, um, that fee is often um, uh, waived. So yeah, hopefully nobody has to worry about that. Uh, there's another little resource here on graphics and software tutorials, because that is something that um, you might find is one of the biggest challenges. Um, you know, is not so much learning the design process and coming up with some creative thoughts, it's articulating it. And, uh, f you know, for myself, I've used the same software for 27 years. Obviously, it's been upgraded annually, but, um, you know, it's, it's easy. I feel it's easy to do. Uh, it's quite another thing to to take on a new software, especially when you're in this sort of, you know, learning curve right now. So for some of you, uh, just doing your designs by hand might be a good idea, right? That's an option. Um, for others that want to, to dive into more of the CAD or digital realm, you can certainly do that. Um, I'm not sure if, there are, no, I don't think that's there, but if you have an iPad, if you have an iPad, one of the uh, brilliant softwares out there that's super cheap, I think it's like $30 a year. I think that's what I pay, um, uh, is Morpheo Trace. And there's quite a few free training videos on this. Um, it, it's a great little software. And if I was to recommend, you know, a startup, somebody starting up a little company and wanted to keep their overhead low, but they wanted, um, some software that would be, you know, that would look good and was easy to use, I would point them in this direction. And, uh, I personally don't use this. Uh, I play around with it a little bit. Um, we kind of use it now and then for, for very rough conceptual ideas, but, um, we use a, a software called, uh, Vectorworks Landmark and, um, you know, I wouldn't recommend, uh, diving into that. It's got a pretty steep learning curve, but, um, it, it's worked well for us. Uh, I see Steve says procreate. Yes, you can use that. The, the advantage of uh, Morpheo Trace is that it is a scaled um, scaled software, so you can scale your drawings easily. Uh, Procreate is a nice graphics software. Um, but whatever works for you, you know, that's where you should lean towards. If you find you're spending more time learning this design software than the course content, you know, you should probably for the short term shift away from whatever it is you're doing and, and try and find something that's a little easier to manage because we don't want you to, um, 
you know, there's a lot of information to digest through the course and we don't want to overload anybody. Uh, and you don't want to get discouraged either, right? It should be as enjoyable a process as possible. So that's a little bit about the software end of it. Um, there are many other, let's see, what are, I'm just trying to think of what some of the people We've ha we have had a few students use uh, Vectorworks, but that's such a large uh, investment in time and energy. I wouldn't uh, necessarily uh, recommend that. But uh, again, you can draw by hand. Um, a lot of people do that. And, you know, I, I wish I could do that. Uh, I, I don't have the skills to, to do uh, the same sort of work uh, manually. So I totally rely on a computer. And there are a lot of advantages from my perspective with that. But um, as we go through the course, I'll be showing you some of uh, examples of some of the work my wife and myself do. And it'll give you an idea of uh, what we, you know, deliver to our clients. And it'll be a little bit different than what the course is set out here. But again, it's all about you know, learning this basic core uh, design um, protocol and sort of manipulating it to, to match up uh, with your needs and how you best see delivering uh, to your clientele. So the other thing, uh, what I would highly recommend is that everybody make a copy of this template file. Okay, um, let, let me just go through that process so that it is fairly straightforward because not everybody is going to be familiar with Google Drives and Google Sheets and stuff. So when we log on to the course, you're going to have, I'm pretty sure you're going to have all these discussion boards visible. And you'll notice I pinned some of them. So there is a... There's a help up there, but that's not my group, sorry. And as you can see, there's four instructors right now. And I have some people I haven't replied to here on the introduction page. But if we just click the discussion menu at the top, we're going to see all of the boards. <clears throat> and there's a general help board here. So if you have any sort of issues and you can't, seem to work through it, uh, definitely go here and just post your question. <clears throat> Excuse me. And <clears throat> I tend to keep my eye on this board. So um, I'm not necessarily on the site every day, but I do keep my eyes open for this. And if there is any uh, anything posted here, I respond to that as quickly as I can. Uh, we have an open thread discussion. <clears throat> and that's for just any permaculture related topic you want to post about. Um, then we have our Q&A Zoom meeting link here. And here's all the dates. Uh, and typically what I do is I send out a note to everyone uh, through the inbox here. So that would, um, no doubt you'd get notified through email, uh, but be probably three or four days before each meeting, I'll send out a little note and I'll include the link. Uh, and, uh, just as a reminder, so you don't have to worry about copying all these down if you don't want to, it, but it's basically every other week. So next week, we next Monday, you'll have lesson one assignment uh, due, and then the following week, we'll have a Q&A, and we'll discuss the following um, assignments that we're, uh, we're looking to put together. So yeah, after today's meeting, I will just uh, pop that in this discussion group. So that is one place that you can uh, access all of the previous meetings. And uh, yeah, and then there's all the other lessons that are gonna be pinned up underneath here. So 
Let's go back. All right, it's not cooperating. Well, okay, here. So there's a syllabus for those who want to take a look at that. Uh, we won't get too much into the rubric. What I'll do is I'll just show you basically. So if we go to lesson one here, <clears throat> there's a couple of things that we want to take a look at. Um, one is you want to download this PDC Pro template file, okay? So to do that, we would just click on that link, and then you you won't be, you'll see it said view only. You're not able to do anything here other than view it. So to actually make this usable, you're going to want to go under File, and you're going to want to make a copy of the entire presentation, and. Uh, just give it a name. Oh. And then you just uh, save that, make a copy. And then now this copy will be one that you can edit. Uh oh, I might have closed that other one. Oh, no, there we are. So a few things with the template file. This is a work in progress, and I think we've had this template uh, operational for, I think, about three years. And uh, so every course, you know, it gets changed ever so slightly. Um, but it is, compared to the courses prior to the template, this is a, a real... Uh, great addition. It just makes it so much easier for people to consistently present uh, the information in here. So let's just back out a little bit. And one thing I wanted to show you was with each of these slides, most of them, you're going to have uh, tutorials and examples and notes around the edge of the slide itself. Okay, so if you zoom out a little bit, you'll see that these are here. And these are just really short video tutorials about various things uh, within the template file. So the whole idea is you're not having to search for answers somewhere else. Uh, so all of our pertinent instructions should be here. And uh, the same goes for when we go through our first assignment. So you might find that really helpful. And let's see, right. So let's say that you have gone through your first assignment and you want to, you filled in all of this information and it's pretty straightforward. It's just a quick little snapshot of your background um, you know, where you've heard about the, uh, heard about permaculture and what your goals are. Those, those are important. A um, little bit of a, a few more questions here. What level of interaction do you want? Because for some students, um, and quite a few actually, uh, they basically are here to look at all the content. They really don't want to do assignments and the, they're not concerned about the certificate. So if you want to get the certificate, you need to do all of the assignments. And um, again, that's what this uh, template file is all about. Uh, Stephanie has a question here. So for the first assignment, do we need to have everything entered on the first slide, like Soil Climax Community? Yeah, if we go back, if for some reason you could not find all this information out, Stephanie, uh, you can add it, but a lot of it you should already know. So you'll know your location and you'll probably know your climate type, right? So if you're, you're, you're being temperate, um, I wouldn't say cold temperate, but it's a temperate uh, climate that we're in on the West Coast. The hardiness zone, that's quite easy to, to find. 
And then yes, the rainfall and the snowfall, you're actually gonna uncover most of that when we get to the climate survey, which is part of the first uh, lesson here. So I think you'll find you get most of it in uh, if you want to leave some of that as is, uh, is absolutely no problem at all. This is not something that uh, you're not graded on this first sheet. So, um, so don't worry about that at all. Uh, where were we here? Okay. Yeah, I was just going to show you how to share your work. So let's say you do get to the, the, the first three sections done and you want to put it on the discussion board. So this is how you're going to post your work at, once you've finished your work, uh, you're going to post it to an appropriate discussion board. So lesson one, we're going to put in the lesson one discussion board. And to do that, we just need to go up to the top right and you'll see this is private for me only. So if, if I went and I shared this, um, if I went and shared this file, nobody would be able to see it because they don't have authorization. So what you wanna do is you go down to general access and you'll say anybody with this link and then you'll have a uh, you'll have three options. Uh, people can view it, uh, they can comment, or they can edit. So I wouldn't recommend you let people edit your work. Uh, and ha just having it on view is great. Uh, if you want people to comment within your document, you know you can set it to that. It doesn't really matter. Whichever one of these you prefer, and once you have uh, this assigned where you want it, you just go copy link. So that copies it to my clipboard and up on the lesson one discussion board where it says reply here, you could just say, uh, no, I, uh, here's my first assignment. And what you can do is just highlight some of the text and you can uh, place your link right in that. So once you've done that, you just post it. And there we go. We go to click on it. That's the file we're gonna get, okay? I will delete that. There we go. So pretty easy to share your work. And that's one really nice thing about the Google Sheets, we're not having to upload information. Uh, and, and that's one reason we went this direction because prior, if um, a student was sharing their, their portfolio and it was in a PDF, uh, as you can see, we you know, you're going to have a hundred plus pages, then the file gets quite large and it can be quite, um, uh, quite inconvenient for everybody to download uh, all that data. So this, this is just much easier. Uh, I think that is pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at the assignment. So Obviously the personal survey is fairly obvious, the design site. So we want to go through and um, just take basically some, um, we have a little bit of land history here and uh, Aboriginal indigenous acknowledgement for whatever uh, lands your project site is on. Uh, then we have basically the, micro to macro and you'll see it right beside the slide there are some examples so if you're wondering what um, we're looking for the examples are often right on the same slide but basically we're just going to have images from google earth go from a big picture to that zoomed in um, project site okay Okay. 
There's a few examples there. Uh, and this slide here, we're asking for surrounding settlements. And then this would be the aerial vision uh, image of the project site itself. And that's quite easy to do just with Google Earth Pro. And I'm going to start that up so I can show you that. We'll just wait a few minutes while it's running. Um, and it's if you don't have it, it's a free download. And it's quite a powerful tool. Uh, we use it for our work uh, in some ways, but um, I don't actually design on it. But it is very useful, as you'll see as we go through the course here. So you can get a, uh, a view of your prop property, and then you'd have to include this um, proposed property line. But that's what we're looking for in this image. And then some images on the ground, right? So it's pretty straightforward. And there you go. That's the sort of thing we're looking for. And over here, it's just showing where these images have been taken from, uh, the position of the camera. All right, so I have Google Earth open. Let me just uh, switch over to that. Cool. Okay. Yeah, we do have a little bit on Google Earth. So this is another um, a student in uh, the class that started six months ago. This is her project site. So basically, Google Earth is a really cool interactive tool uh, that allows us to go anywhere pretty much in the world and um, see what's going on. Uh, now, what you'll notice is when you zoom in on projects, you can see it almost goes into a perspective view here. And that's not ideal for uh, what we're doing. It, it may be of interest um, for viewing, but not for displaying. So. If we wanted to take a screenshot of this, before I did that, uh, there's a couple things I'd wanna be sure of. I'd wanna be sure I'm directly overhead of this property. And to do that, you just hit the U key on your keyboard and that'll put us into that 2D overhead mode. And the reason that is uh, important is we are looking at you know, we're trying to get a scaled drawing here. And when we're 2D overhead, it's the same, the distance at the front and the back of the property are gonna be the same. If we go to a perspective view, uh, this line is gonna be closer to, the view, to us than this line. So we're gonna get incorrect measurements. So we wanna be directly overhead and we wanna be north up. That is a standard for basically for all landscape and architecture um, globally is maps are north up. So if for some reason we're not north up, let's say we were, we we're kind of playing around and uh, you know, some project sites, um, you know, might be, they might fit on the paper better if they weren't north up, but we want to try and when we're showing the, the whole project site, that base plan, we want to try and do that. So if we're on Google Earth and we want to make sure we're north up, we just hit the N key and that's going to return us to uh, that position. So it's very easy for us to put in a property line. Uh, all you have to do is go up to the top here under polygon and you'll have a little dialog box pop up, which you don't have to worry about. And you just basically uh, put in your property line where, where you see it. You can then make adjustments to that. And then in our dialog box, 
there's a little style and color tab, uh, you would want to just make some changes there. And typically for a property line, we'd wanna, we'd wanna see that in uh, as a red color. Uh, it also could be dashed, right? So instead of a solid line, uh, it could be a dashed line. And, uh, and basically that, you know, could represent that screenshot that you'd be trying to input onto that first, uh, first assignment or first lesson. So it's not an exact property boundary, uh, but it's the best we're going to be able to do in this situation. Okay. <clears throat> if for some reason you have more accurate information about your property line, uh, you can certainly integrate it there. When we're doing our work, we will always uh, start with accurate property dimensions. Um, just here, we've got a little question. Where is the polygon? Okay, so it's right up here. Let me get my little pointer tool going. <clears throat> the polygon tool is right up here. If you hover over these, they should show you what they are, but they're not today for me. Uh, but the second one over is polygon. Yeah, and then <clears throat> you'll have a dialog box come up, and I don't think it did. Let me just... Uh, I'm going to reshare this. Uh oh. <laughs> Too many layers going on here. Now I seem to have lost Google Earth. Okay, let's get that back. Yeah, I don't know where that went. Okay, bear with me. There we go. Yeah, so when you do hit that polygon tool, you'll have a dialog box come up, but don't worry about that box. Just draw what you want and then hit OK afterwards. Uh, and you can manipulate whether this has fill in it or what color the line is or what thickness the line is. Um, so you, you want to do a little bit of work on Google Earth through the course. And one of the reasons it's handy is if we, if we go to that polygon, uh, and you'll see it at the bottom here, and we right click on that and we say, get info. Uh, you probably can't see the box that I'm seeing, but it will give us the area measurements. There's a dialog box there. So this tells me that that property boundary is 11,000 plus square feet. So that's one of the ways we're going to get the area of our project site. That's an easy way to do it. If you weren't aware how big the site was. Um, the other thing is as well, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see there's what's called imagery date. So that's when the image, the satellite took that uh, image. And then beside it is our coordinates. So these are the coordinates you'll want to copy onto your document. So you will notice when we go through the template file, uh, there'll be what's called a title block on your design sheets. And that title block is something that gets repeated on all of the design sheets. And that's stating who is designing, where the site is, and it's also asking for your coordinates. And the nice thing about that is we can quickly jump onto Google Earth with those coordinates and see uh, where your location is. So Maggie had a question here. What if the date is old and the property looks really different? Yeah, that happens. And um, 
we find, uh, well, that's one of the reasons we don't use Google Earth too much. Um, it is a very useful tool. It's really helpful for this class, but the odds are the site will look a little different. And if that's the case, don't get too worried about that. Uh, there is one thing you can look at right up here, this icon. right at the top here. If you click on that icon, you'll get the sliding date. Okay, and if you go to the arrow on the left, you can go back in time and it's gonna show you that site at different, this was back in 2020 in July and then 2018. And this can actually be a very useful thing to look at, uh, but you can see how different it was, you know, back in 2012. And the same holds true. We can go all the way forward and get the latest image possible. So again, this is a really useful, easy to use tool for this class, uh, but how, much would you use this professionally? Hmm, you know, probably uh, not a lot. So I will show you how we use it. Um, just as a quick, since we're on Google Earth. So we do some farm designs as well. And uh, one of the things we do is we use this to actually communicate with our clients. Okay. So if I go to one of our projects here, um, this is a little urban project we we're doing and we <clears throat> we were able to get what's called LIDAR data and we convert that in another software and we can import these uh, one foot contours. So we have a contour map that we can overlay into Google Earth. That's really helpful. Uh, we've got another project over here. Let's see what's going on with that. So here is where Google Earth is very interesting in that uh, right here is where we have a project currently and it's an old bit of farmland. I'm actually just gonna switch there we go. I hope that didn't look. I just switched screens with my uh, software open here. Uh, we can go back in time and take a look at this property. And um, one thing we were doing, this, this ha property has new owners and they have a lot of water challenges on the property. So we go back in time and we're back in 2012. We could see that uh, this was a little market garden. There's an orchard and they, maybe it was before that. They were actually uh, producing hay on this property, right? <clears throat> so that was back in 2005. And uh, currently, if we go back to what, you can see that um, this has all become overgrown. This was a drainage uh, network, some open ditches that vegetated and the water slowed down. And then this is just creeping back into being a wetland. So that's one, you know, one uh, way that Google Earth can be very, very useful is just seeing historically what's going on. Um, we have some interesting 
Nope. Yeah, those are uh, actually images we took of the site that we can embed on uh, Google Earth and then click on them. And uh, you can see there's a lot of water here and gives us elevation, location, time. So that's, uh, you know, that's not something we want to get into today. Um, we have, let me see. <clears throat> We've got a lot of things on here. We have, uh, we did a drone survey and we have a drone image overlay. I'm not sure it's gonna want to appear. Might be a little too much to ask. Given I'm on Zoom and uh, we're sending out, there we go. So part of the, so we have this high definition image that we overlaid onto Google Earth. And uh, you can see it got chopped off here for some reason, but you can see what our, our clients did. They basically, they basically had a uh, um, civil construction firm come in and strip all the vegetation and dig a pond. And then they realized they needed some help and, uh, and called us. So we can also do slope maps. So basically this area, we take that LIDAR data and uh, generate a slope map. There's a few cool things that we've done with the, I really enjoy mapping. So uh, definitely enjoy. Yeah, I won't get too far into that stuff that you're not gonna really need to worry about right now. Other than it's um, again, really useful. So where I live, uh, we have a LIDAR index uh, for uh, Vancouver Island. And if I activate that, you can see all the quadrants here. I can go into any of these areas and look for what's available download wise. These are all free downloads. Uh, and then take that data and um, I have to process it for it to be usable, but uh, it's a fairly low cost tool. Uh, it's free actually using QGIS, but it's not, um, uh, it's not intuitive or user-friendly. Uh, it takes a little bit of training to get used to that. So, so I should probably stop talking about Google Earth. Um, any questions about that at all? I don't think you're not going to have to get into it too deep, but it is uh, a useful tool for you guys. Maybe we should go back. Go back to the template file here. There we go. And yeah, so one thing I didn't point out um, is if you're on any of the discussion boards, you'll notice at the top, there's a number of different tabs here. And the, the top or the first tabs are gonna be regarding all the kind of portions of an assignment. So here we have the personal survey, and then you're gonna have some information about that. Then we have our design site and there's a little document here, how to choose one. If you're wondering about, hmm, is this site gonna be appropriate? You might wanna check into that. <clears throat> and then we have the climate survey, a little bit of info there. And then there are resources you might wanna look at. So climate resources, and then there is the rubric. So do make sure, um, and a couple of instructional videos on how to copy and share that we just went through. Uh, make sure that you do check out the rubric before you submit an assignment, because this basically is what I use to provide 
grading for for you guys. So I do two things. I'm going to grade your assignments, and then I'm going to provide you with some feedback. And um, we do want you to include everything. So if you include all of what's asked for here, you'll you'll get full marks, right? Um, if that's important. But I mean, if you want to get your certificate, I think it's 80% you want to get for to do that. And that's totally achievable for everybody if they are just following the rubric. Okay, so so do check that out. Uh, the feedback that I provide, I like to, to provide video feedback. So what I will do uh, typically is uh, I'll open up your document and uh, we'll have the document uh, just as we were sharing screen right now. And I'll just go through, through your assignment and provide you with feedback uh, on each page, right? So what you'll probably find is the first few assignments are pretty straightforward and there's you know not a huge amount uh, of feedback needed there a little a little bit here we want to make sure that you have your average annual rainfall and if you can get that extreme rainfall event that's a good thing to have um, when we get into the base map you definitely want to make sure um, and that's for our next q and A. I'm not going to go too far into that today, but this is, you definitely want to make sure you do as good a job as you can with your base map, because the more accurate it is, the easier the whole rest of the mapping process is going to be. Okay. But we're going to get into that in the next, next, uh, session. So. Uh, don't worry about that. As we go along in the course, we're going to be diving deeper and deeper into our site analysis. And my feedback, especially when we get to lesson five and we get into watershed mapping, I will be spending a lot more time providing feedback in the latter part of the course than I would in the beginning of the course. So that's probably what you'll find. Uh, and then as we get near the end of the course uh, into these more in-depth lessons, um, especially the, the last two lessons, nine and 10, you know, we'll be providing you with as much uh, time and energy as I can. Uh, you know, between 15, 20 minute is average video uh, feedback for that. So. If you feel some of the beginning bits of feedback are quite short, um, do remember that the ones at the end of the course are going to be much more in depth. So it's, you know, not often required, especially in lesson number one, because we're really just basically looking at your personal survey and where your site, your, your proposed site is and the climate. So those are pretty straightforward. Now, I do see there was a question on the Q&A document here. And I would encourage everybody, if you do have a question about an upcoming lesson, uh, please place it in here. And this is, because um, what often happens is, is you might have the same question somebody else does. So I will be prioritizing these during the Q&A uh, meetings that we have. And if time allows, we'll be taking questions from, uh, from the floor or from the chat. Um, and then we'll place the answers after the class, I place the answers below so that this is a record you can always look back on. So Steve has a question here. He lives in an apartment <clears throat> with very little money for a design. Could you do a butterfly garden on a patio? Well, Steve, I, I would say that you could do either. Um, my The caveat here is if you wanted to get the most out of the course, I would, 
I would lean towards doing the whole complex. And the reason is you're going to have all of these hard surfaces that are going to be shedding water. That's one thing. Uh, so you're going to have some management of water to factor in. Whereas if you had a little patio, um, it's going to be somewhat limited. So you could do either one and I'm totally happy with whichever way you're comfortable going. But I do think that doing a slightly bigger picture is, uh, is probably more beneficial for you in the, in the class here. And I've, I have had a number of students uh, do complexes like that. Now, the one thing to keep in mind too is, let's say you're on a big complex or perhaps it is a large acreage, but you only intend to design part of it. Um, what my recommendation is, uh, it would be to include that whole property boundary and that whole site um, and reference that throughout the course, even if you're just planning to, again, augment or design a small portion or a portion thereof. And that happens a lot with us. You know, we've, we've worked on hundred acre sites and yet, you know, we were really just focused on three or four acres of that, but you want to take the whole into account. There may be resources uh, on those outline areas that you find uh, influence uh, where you're in fact doing your design work. So I hope that answers your question, Steve. Um, again, it's your choice, totally. And uh, I've even had students actually do the rooftop of their apartment. But again, it, it's, it's going to limit uh, some of the exercises that you do. So I would, um, again, go with the bigger one. And uh, honestly, <clears throat> from my perspective, small sites are way harder to design. So an, a small urban site is much harder than, say, five or 10 acres, right? And that's just my personal opinion. Um, is there's less room, less margin for error. And uh, you pretty much see every square foot of the project site. Whereas on larger acreage, often a lot of it's going to be left, um, left as is, and you're not going to be touching much of it. So it looks like we have another comment here. Oh, Steve, good. That answers your question. Excellent. Um, yeah. So hopefully that's been helpful. Um, is there any other questions or comments for people? I think that we've covered off quite a bit to get you started. The next Q&A meeting will be really dialed into the base map and um, what to include on that. But for this go around, for this, assignment. We really just want to get a idea of what your project site looks like from Google Earth and some images on the ground um, and a little snapshot of yourself and a little bit about the climate. So it's um, a good first step in the course and um, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not sure if there's any questions out there. Please feel free to pop them in the chat. If not, I think that will um, conclude today's meeting. I'll just make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, I guess the only thing I could say is when you do go to post, you'll notice the information at the top of the page and then there'll be a reply. It's kind of funny to have this shown as reply because you're not you're really posting so this is where you would put your message at the very top um now if you were commenting on brooks work you took a look at her work and you want to comment there would be a reply below her post here so that's where you would um say hey great job 
or whatever comment you want to, uh, you know, respectful comment, obviously. Um, that's how you would post. Make sure it goes below the person's uh, post on the discussion board. Uh, and we have one question here. Mary, yeah. So I've been doing some work on my property <clears throat> over the last year. Should I start it as it is now, or should my design reflect the baseline before I make changes? That's a really good question. So how I look at, um, and this would be more focused on next week, uh, but how I look at base maps would be they are a representation of that project site in this moment. So if you have made changes, then that's where we're starting from. Uh, include those changes. If you have proposed changes, then uh, no, let's just uh, hold off on those thoughts till you get <laughs> a little further into the course. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, the, the caveat to that would be, let's say you have a, um, <clears throat> you've bought property and it has no dwelling on it. So that does happen. In that case, you'd want to pro put in a proposed building footprint somewhere, right? Uh, to represent your future dwelling, um, maybe a driveway as well. But we'll get there next week. Uh, Brittany has a question. Where do we find the average last spring frost and the average first frost? Yeah, well, there are some really good resources here under assignment resources that look at uh, all the climate data and they really are focused on the US. So you should be able to find that uh, within this group of uh, Right there in particular, <clears throat> the Farmer's Almanac Cross Dates. Uh, you shouldn't have any problem finding that. And um, if you do have trouble, um, well, let me know if you do have trouble. <laughs> but uh, that's often not a problem in North America to find those dates out. And Julie has a question here. Would implementation of the finished design be after the course is finished and you continue to work with the client? <clears throat> so we'll we'll get into that. Um, so I guess you're talking about the actual build versus the design. And yeah, that would be a whole course under its own. Um, there's a, I think what you'll find is as we get to the end of the course, there's a whole bunch of new questions that come up. And for many people, <clears throat> it's um, how do I start? You know, where do I start? How do I get going with a, a new business like this? And that's something that uh, one of the instructors, uh, Javin Bernakovich and myself have been chatting about offering some sort of, um, you know, mentorship support. So as the course goes along, well, I'll have more info about that. So the implementation is something completely separate to what we're doing here. We're really just focused on designing, okay? But as we go through the course, I'm gonna show you examples of some of the projects I've been involved with, and I'll certainly dive into some of those practices but that is such a big rabbit hole. Uh, honestly, when I first got into, uh, well, we'll call it horticulture, uh, back in my early 20s, um, I went through an apprenticeship program and it took me 10 years to get comfortable with the, the maintenance and the installation end of things. It's, it's a long, long haul. And then I chose to start my own business with my wife and you know, that took years. Um, so it, it's a really, you know, and I've, I guess we're coming up to, I'm 60 now. So, you know, it's been about 38 years of work in the field. Um, and I'm still learning new things. And um, I don't plan on stopping. 
um, just kind of modifying what I do. But uh, the installation is a great part of it. And there are a lot of, um, there will be some things I can pass along to you guys about that, uh, how we approach it. So yeah, no problem, Julie. Yeah, we certainly do as much as I can during these Q and A uh, videos to show you the, the work that we're doing because really this class is all about putting your ideas on paper, learning the design protocol. And um, as you'll see uh, with some of the deliverables that we provide for, for our clients, going through this step-by-step -step process really makes the design process a lot easier, right? So for us, we start with water. After we, we go through a few other things and site analysis, we look at the water resources. So because it goes through these steps, uh, it's a much easier process than just looking at a site and trying to come up with this grand vision for it. So uh, it does take a little bit of practice though. And um, Beth has a question here. Would you say that most of your work is design only? No, we uh, typically, up until this year, we would design uh, and in install those works, right? So we did not install all the designs we did because we used to do commercial designs and uh, that would not be something we would install. They're way too risky uh, and no fun really. Um, but we used to design them. But uh, our focus is more on farm and, and uh, residential. And um, yeah, we've, we've put in a lot of uh, installations ourselves, but not every drawing we do gets installed. Some people do it themselves. Uh, sometimes, you know, your design may not get installed and that's, that can happen. Um, but again, the install, <clears throat> is a fun part. Um, and that was something unique we could offer people. So we could put things on paper for them. And then we detailed stuff out to a point where we could give them a fixed price for the installation. Uh, so they knew if they wanted these ideas and this exact look that this is how much it would cost. And then we would come in with our, uh, our people and make it happen. And um, yeah, we'll walk you through a few, a few projects during the course of these Q and A's and um, it's lots of fun. And it, it's really enjoyable. I think what you'll also find is just seeing other people's, uh, you know, if you check out other students work and you're commenting on them, um, you know, it's wonderful to see what other ideas people come up with. And that's, uh, I, that's one thing I really enjoy is just seeing what everybody does. And um, um, yeah, so it'll be a fun class. Uh, well, I enjoy it anyways, and I hope all of you will. Uh, if for some reason you don't want, it's not, it's never happened to me, but if for some reason video feedback is not good for you, if you prefer to see it in writing or uh, some other um, mode, let me know. And I'll shift what I do for to best suit your, um, you know, what works for you guys. But um, uh, the video feedback is really nice. And um, yeah, we'll go with that unless uh, stated otherwise. But I should uh, wrap up today if nobody else has any other questions. And um, yeah, if for some reason you can't make the uh, meeting, do check out the recordings. Um, and yeah, have a, a great holiday, uh, July 4th, tomorrow. Uh, we had Canada Day in Canada here on, I guess it was Saturday. So kind of similar, but different. But um, yeah, thank you very much, everybody, for joining me here. And I uh, really enjoy the Q&A meetings. So um the more people that are here, the better, as far as I'm concerned, and love to answer questions. So everybody have a great week. And if you run into any trouble, don't hesitate to drop me a note in, through the inbox icon or in that help discussion board. And uh, we'll make sure we get you uh, on track. So 
have a great week and thank you again. We'll see you later.